Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is question, or this is uh, the P3 International A Level at Excel paper um, from June 2022. I'm going to be going through this paper question by question, a separate video for each question, so I can save the videos in playlists for the paper and playlists for the topic. Um, I'm going to go through the questions, and sometimes I might take a bit of time to explain. Um, certain concepts which I feel some of my students uh, need help with. All right, so I'm not just a, ta a talking mark scheme. If that's what you're looking for, then maybe you might find that somewhere else. So, um, you know, I'm going to take some time to explain certain topics in a bit of detail sometimes when I feel it's necessary. So I'm going to start with question number one, which is about this curve C, which has equation y equals 3x minus 2 to the power of 6, and we've got to find dy dx. Now in P3, we get introduced to different types of differentiation. In P1 and P2, we normally have something in, in this kind of format. It could be something that we have to re rewrite in something like this. It could be like, you know, 1 over x or the square root of x. In the end, we write it in this form. And then when we differentiate it, we multiply by the power and take one from the power. That's the type of differentiating we're used to in P1, okay, and P2 as well. Now, here we have something which in P1 or P2, we would normally have a bracket, we would expand it and then differentiate each term individually. Now, this is something to the power of 6, which is, makes it a bit awkward for us to do that. To make it like, for example, a binomial expansion, you'll end up with you know, seven terms, and then you have to differentiate each of those terms, it's going to uh, be very cumbersome. So there is um, a method that we, we learnt, which is called the chain rule, which is very, very, very important, because the reverse of the chain rule is what we use to do some integration. So understanding the chain rule is very important for us. Okay, so I'm going to take a bit of time to explain this um, chain rule. So basically, when we want to differentiate something like this, okay, this is the method that we're going to Use. This is basically the short method of doing it. So what we do is we differentiate the thing as a whole. So you have 6 times this bracket, and then you take 1 from the back bracket. Okay, So it's just the same kind of concept as this. Multiply by the power, take 1 from the power. However, because there's a function inside the function, you could say, it's not just x, it's 3x minus 2. We have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So we have to multiply by the differential of 3x minus 2, which is 3. So that gives us 18 times 3x minus 2 to the power 5. And that is the differential of this. That's using the chain rule to differentiate this. Okay. Now, some people might ask, why do we do this? So I'm going to just quickly show you the basis behind the chain rule, which is basically substitution. Okay, so what you do is you say, okay, let u be this function inside the function. So let u be 3x minus 2. So we have du dx is equal to 3. Okay, and we can say, therefore, y is equal to u to the power of 6, because we called 3x minus 2 u, so y is equal to uh, u to the power of 6. So dy du is 6u to the power of 5. Now, if I want to find dy dx, I have dy du, and I have du dx. So if I multiply dy du by du dx, what happens is you can say these cancel out, and I'm left with dy dx. So if I multiply these two together, I have dy du, which is 6u to the power of 5, multiplied by du dx, which is 3, which gives me 18u to the power of 5. Now, the u is something we introduced ourselves in order to help us differentiate it. So our answer shouldn't be in terms of u. It should be in terms of x. So I can replace the u with 3x minus 2. So I have 18 times 3x minus 2 to the power of 5. And there's the answer. Exactly the same answer. So that's the concept or that's the method behind uh, the chain rule, which we don't actually have to use in this formal way if we don't want to. We can just say, okay, we take, we have to know what is the main function. The main function is something to the power of 6. It's like you can say, the, the quick way of dealing with it is to say something like this, that the main function is, you know, um, 
say is g to the g of something. Inside that function, there's another function. Okay, inside that function is another function. So if you want to differentiate this, then you differentiate the function as a whole. So you have g dash of fx, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function times f dash of x. So you differentiate the function as a whole, like six times the whole thing to the power five. Then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is the differential of three x minus two is three, and you get your answer. Okay, so that works with this polynomial type of differentiation, and it works with other types of differentiation, which you know we have learnt about in P3, how to differentiate, for example, sine x, cosine x, tan x, you know, all the trig functions, we know how to differentiate them, and the most of them are, except for sine and cosine, I mentioned in the formula book, we also have e to the power of x, lin x, a to the power of x, all these things we know how to differentiate. They don't all differentiate in this way, they differentiate in their own uh, their own particular ways, but we have to know how to apply the chain rule to them. So, for example, let me just give you an example. Supposing y was equal to e to the power of, say, let's say, sine x. e to the power of sine x. Now, dy dx, now, how do you differentiate e to the power of something? Here we, we recognize the main function is e to the power of something. That's the main function, e to the power of something. How does that differentiate? Well, it stays the same. So you're going, you're going to have e to the power of sine x, because that's how e to the power of x differentiates. You get e to the power of x. But this is e to the power of sine x, so you get e to the power of sine x. But inside the function, there's another function. Now, inside the function is this. Sine x is inside the function. So we have to multiply by the differential of sine x, which is cosine x. So that's our answer. e to the power of sine x times cosine x outside there. And that's an example of the chain rule. Okay, so... Uh, hopefully, we'll have more examples of that later on as well. So that's basically an, a little summary of a um, few little things about the, the chain, which is very, very important for us to understand. So that's part A of the question done. Now we're going to go to part B. Now part B says, given that the point P, which has coordinates a third one, lies on the curve C. So it lies on this curve given by this equation. Find the equation of the normal to C at P. Write your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C are integers to be found. Okay, so we know that the um, we got to find the equation of the normal to the curve C at P. Now, let's say the curve looks something like this. We don't know what it looks like. I'm just drawing something random. All right. Um, the tangent to a curve is basically a straight line which just brushes past the curve without cutting through it. And it has the same gradient of the curve at the point where it touches it. Now, the normal to a curve is a line which is perpendicular to the tangent of the curve at that same point. So, supposing, just suppose this was a point P. This would be the tangent. The normal would be a line which cuts the tangent at that point P, at 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to the tangent. So the gradient of the normal to the curve is perpendicular to the gradient of the tangent to the curve. So if we find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at P, we can find the gradient of the normal. Now remember, the normal is a straight line. And to find the equation of the straight line, we need two things. We need a point on the line, okay, which we have, which is P, which is a third one, so we have that already. And the other thing is we need the gradient of that line. So we need the gradient of the normal to the curve at P. Okay. Now, to find the gradient of the normal, we need to find the gradient of the tangent. The gradient of the tangent has the same gradient of the curve at that point. Now, what does dy dx tell us? It's, you can think about it means dy dx means the change in y over the change in x, which is the gradient. The, 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 the function we just found, dy dx, for this curve, Okay, for the curve that we've just, you know, talked about earlier, that this dy dx, this is the gradient function. This tells us what the gradient of this curve is at any point that we choose to find it at. And we know that uh, we are trying to find the coordinates or the, gra the gradient of the curve at the point where x equals one third, because that's where p is. So I know that dy dx at that point is given by 18 times 3x minus 2 to the power of 5. Just to make sure that was right. Yep, 
So now, when x equals one third, that means the gradient of the tangent of the curve will be 18 times 3 times a third, which is 1, minus 2 to the power of 5. Well, that gives us 18 times, that's 1 minus 2, so it's 18 times minus 1 to the power of 5, which is going to be minus 18. So that's the gradient of the tangent to the curve. So therefore, the gradient, the gradient of the normal is going to be, now, when two, when two lines are perpendicular to each other, when they, when they are at right angles to each other, their gradients are called negative reciprocals. So this is like minus 18 over 1. So the gradient of the normal is going to be plus 1 over 18. It's going to be 1 over 18. Okay? So that's the gradient of the curve, 1 over 18. So now we can find the equation of this, the line, the normal, in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So there's two different methods we could use for finding the equation. I prefer to use this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we know um, that you have y minus, and we know, the, we know the point is a third and one, so the y value is 1 equals m, which is 1 over 18, times x minus, and the x value of the point is 1 third. Okay, so now I'm going to try to write this so that I have um, whole number um, coefficients. So what I'll do, I'll multiply both sides by 18 first. That gives me 18y minus 18 equals x minus 1 third. I don't need the bracket now. Okay, and I can even get rid of that 1 third by, because uh, I don't want to have a fraction here, I can multiply both sides by, by 3 now. If I multiply by 3, and this side also by 3, Okay, I'll get 3 times 18, that's 30. 30 plus that's 54y minus 54 equals 3x minus 1. And now I want to bring everything on one side, and I'll try to keep the x as positive, so I'll have 0 on this side. 3x minus 54, where did the 4 go? 54y minus 54y and then minus 1 plus 54, which is plus 53. So we end up with our final answer as 3x minus 54y plus 53 equals 0. That's in the form required in the answer where, a, where we have integer, integer coefficients for a, a, b, and also the constant. Okay, so we end up with the answer there. Now, there's an alternative method that we could use. Which is which a lot of students still always like to use since IGCSE. I personally prefer this method, but it's perfectly fine to use this method, where we have the gradient and we have the point, which was a third and one, was it? The third and one, that's right. So we can just replace the x with a third and the y with one and the m with one over eighteen. So you have one equals one over eighteen times a third plus c, so you have 1 equals 1 over, that's 30, that's again 54, plus c, so you end up with, if you multiply by 54, um, if you multiply by, uh, well, if you subtract, you have 1 minus 1 over 54 equals c, so c is going to be 53 over 54, so we end up with y equals, y equals m, which was, 1 over 18x plus 53 over 54, multiplying both sides by 54 to make it in terms of, as I mentioned, um, you know, integer values. You have 54y and a one third, one eighth x times 54 is 3x, and 53 over 54 times 54 is plus 53. So, uh, sorry, plus 53, not 54. Okay, and then you'll end up with 3x minus 54, minus 54y. 3x minus 54y plus 53 equals 0. Same answer. Okay, I just did that in case some people just are used to using this method. Okay, so it's perfectly fine to use both of of course. And there's the answer to that question, which was part B of um, question number 1. I think that was it. Yep. That's the end of question number one, part A and B. So it's all about the chain rule, 
and applying differentiation to questions where you're finding the equation of the normal to the curve. Okay, I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions that you'd like to watch from this paper can be found in the playlist that will be appearing in this region over here. You click on the link there. You can click on the link over here to take you to uh, questions dealing with differentiation of P3 and its applications. And also you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle here. Other material that you might want to watch from my other units of Edexcel Maths as well as IGCSE Cambridge, you can find in the description um, underneath the video, you'll find some links to documents that will have ind a, like indexes for you to help you navigate through those material. Thank you for watching and see you soon.